I'm good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paula Begon, founder of Paula's Choice Skincare. Thank you for being here today, and I'm glad to be here today to get a chance to talk to you and answer your questions, uh, to have this moment of being live. So I can't edit myself. I can just share with you what I know. Um, Paula's Choice is all about truth and beauty and what we know because the research shows us the direction. Uh, and it's kind of interesting as we talk about truth and beauty at Paula's Choice, one of the things that, uh, that has an air of irony is that truth actually isn't truth in the hard, fast sense of the word truth. Because truth in science changes, and that's what we've been doing for the 35 years ever since I started writing my books is, and writing my articles and content and appearing in media is that as science changed, as we knew more and more, then the information changed. And so truth and beauty is a moving target and that's what we work very hard to do is to keep you up to date, keep ourselves up to date. But, you know, people often ask me, what do you do in the morning? What is your day like? And I start every morning, I, well, I wouldn't say always the same way. It depends how much makeup I have to get into for appearances. But for the most part, um, I get uh, alerts, I get notifications when articles have uh, studies, articles have been posted in different medical journals and science journals uh, that relate to skin or skin care or certain types of ingredients we're researching. And then I get articles and studies to take a look at. So I start almost every morning doing that research. I love it. As, um, okay, not always love it. Sometimes I hate it because it's overwhelming and it's time consuming and maybe I'd rather do something else. But for uh, ever since the internet came along and I didn't have to be in libraries anymore, then I've used these notifications to keep me up to date, to keep truth and beauty in front of me, in front of you, uh, and have this opportunity now to answer your questions. So, uh, before um, we take the first question, I've been uh, very, uh, they've been not, you know, they never let me tell you what's coming out until it comes out because. You know, anything can happen before something actually launches on paulaschoice.com. Um, but we created uh, a new body cream, which it's really more than a cream. It's really a very lush, beautiful, gorgeous texture. Slips on. It's, it's, it's just everything I dreamed it would be and more. Uh, the fundamental concept for skincare from the neck down is actually the same as it is for the neck up. Skin needs the same, is hungry for the same kind of ingredients that the face is. Skin replenishing ingredients, skin restoring ingredients. All the kind of ingredients that help skin be healthy from the neck up, help skin be healthy and young from the neck down. Now, your legs sometimes don't get a lot of sun damage, so they actually often end up being younger than your face, healthier than your face, but it really depends. But for the most part, almost all of us have some amount of sun damage on our legs, which is why we have, and I formulated very specific products for the neck down that mimic what you need from the neck up. So we have a retinol product from the neck down. Retinol is a very powerful skin restoring ingredient. And we have exfoliants, a 10% AHA for the neck down and a 2% BHA for the neck down. And now, we have this beautiful body cream. I wish we could have come up with a more exciting name to really represent what it is and what it does for skin in terms of that beautiful initial sensation of when you put it on. And then, of course, when it comes to the formulary and the ingredients, it has the all-important antioxidants, beautiful hydrating, replenishing ingredients, skin restoring ingredients, all of the ingredients that support the barrier of skin you don't have an intact barrier, it can't be hydrated, it can't be smooth, it won't be younger. So this is Paula's Choice new Daily Replenishing Body Cream. I know it's easy to forget skin from the neck down. Probably nobody's worse about it than I am. Uh, but this is actually helping me remember I have it out on my counter. I actually now have it next to my bedside. My bedside's getting a little crowded because I have my lip and body balm because I never want to go to bed with my lips naked and now I know that I absolutely don't want to go to bed with my legs naked either uh, at least not in terms of being protected with moisturizer we won't talk about the other part so 
Paula's Choice new Daily Replenishing Body Cream. I'm very excited. Consider taking a look at it uh, and giving it a try. I think you'll find that it is as beautiful for you. It works as beautiful for you as it does for me. At least I'll hope so. And of course, you can always go always go on Paula's Choice. Dot com and go to the product page for the body moisturizer and let me know what you think about it. Without you, I can't make products better. I need your feedback. We always pay attention to what you tell us. What you tell us is the most motivating, inspiring, fascinating, challenging part of what I do. Uh, it has always been a driving force behind the products we formulate why we formulate products for such different skincare needs and skin types. Um, we're still one of the few companies, I'm very proud to say, that still care about your skin type. So whether you have dry skin, oily skin, uh, super sensitive skin, skin with problems, acne, we have specific products that match the needs for that skin problem with textures that match your skin type. So if you have oily skin, and I know some of you have heard me say this a million times, if you have oily skin, you need products that are very lightweight and fluid and not creamy and thick. And if you have dry skin, you want far more emollient, rich, beautiful products like my, actually, you can use this on your face, give it a shot, <laughs> that would be a bargain. And you have that lush, rich texture loaded with beneficial ingredients because everybody needs the same ingredients not everybody, well, not always all the same ingredients. You don't have acne, you don't need the acne ingredients. But for the most part, when it comes to having healthy, restored, a strong barrier or a protected barrier, protecting your skin from environmental damage, from sun damage, those ingredients don't differ person to person and they certainly don't differ because of age. So do we have questions? Oh, we Are have there so many. Oh, let's start with questions. Uh, Sarah says, hi, Paula, your line has been such a lifesaver for me. Thank you. You're welcome, Sarah. I wanted to know how often I have to wash my makeup brushes and beauty blenders to prevent breakouts. So you're not going to break out from a dirty uh, makeup brush. The bacteria that is responsible for causing acne, the P. The P Actus bacteria, doesn't live in air. It is an anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic means doesn't like air, it dies in the presence of air, so it thrives within the pore, because within the pore, deep within the pore, particularly underneath the pore, really is where it thrives the most, air can't get to it. So you're not going to break out from dirty brushes. You're going to feel icky because the brush then deposits oil on your skin, it affects the color of the makeup, so it's really about getting the best application. But I don't want you to wreck your brushes because if you wash them too much, you'll damage the hair, the, the ferrule, ferrul, whatever that metal thing that holds the hair in place, the glue can break down and then you start having a shedding brush. So I think it really has to do with how often you use your brush and how much gunk builds up on it. Now I'm notorious for not washing my brushes so I don't want you to take my lead, but I would recommend once a month and now I think given I can't actually remember the last time I washed my brushes. I'm washing my brushes tonight. All I do, I use my Paula's Choice uh, shampoo, but any gentle shampoo that you have, that's all you really need. You don't need a, you don't need a special uh, makeup brush cleaner. It generally contains almost the exact same ingredients uh, that a shampoo contains. Uh, and then just very gently wipe it around within the shampoo rinse it a couple of times until you don't see any color, gently press it to remove the excess built up water and then lay it flat and let it dry. I know it's tempting to want to use your blow dryer to dry your brushes, but that damages the hair of the brush as much as it damages your hair on your head when you put direct hot heat on it. So that's the way to go about it. I would say once a month is plenty, but if you're doing it because you think it's making you break out, that's erroneous. That is not how breakouts happen. Dirty brushes don't do it. Mara says that she's been using the clear cleanser and clear exfoliant for blackheads and bumps. Her skin is also very dry and it seems to be getting worse. Oh my. What can she do to combat her blackheads but also hydrate? So, uh, let's see. 
I have a suspicion that the clear cleanser is probably too much for your skin. It might be too dry. So I would suggest that you swap that out and consider my skin balancing cleanser. And you can call my, uh, uh, sorry, my allergies are driving me crazy, so I'm going to try to leave my nose alone. Uh, you can call my customer service team here at Paula's Choice and they can help you with that. But I think the cleanser might be too much. Now, in terms of the 2% BHA liquid uh, in the clear line, then I'm curious if you're using the extra strength or the regular strength. And so what I would suggest is using the regular strength and not the extra strength. However, if you're already using the regular strength and that's the one you're having problems with, then I would start, you, instead of using it twice a day, I would only use it once a day. If you're only using it once a day, then use it every other day. And then what I would encourage you to add for the dehydration is take a look at uh, one of my boosters, the uh, Paula's Choice 10% uh, niacinamide booster, the hyaluronic acid booster, which are my absolute favorites. However, you can also consider the Paula's Choice Resist, uh, the one for normal toily skin, the ultra light antioxidant concentrate. All of those are very fluid, they don't clog pores, and they have an incredible amount of hydration, not to mention protecting ingredients. The 10% the niacinamide in particular, uh, I'm very fond of recommending because the research about it and how it affects pores is, is incredibly impressive, not to mention that it strengthens the barrier of skin and has hydrating anti-aging properties. So all three of those uh, are options to consider and then trying the skin balancing cleanser instead of the clear cleanser and cutting back on how often you're using the exfoliant I think can get you the results. It is absolutely not okay to have your skin be worse. So let us help you uh, find the best products for your skin so that doesn't happen. Megan is asking what benefits can she really expect from an eye cream? Will her fine lines really disappear? Will your fine lines really disappear? You know, that, that's such a hard question to answer, so let me put it this way. The benefit of a well-formulated uh, eye cream, like any well-formulated product, should be to give your skin all the beneficial ingredients that help keep it healthy and young. So whether or not the depth of those lines, that fine lines, deep lines, whatever they're called, should get somewhat better. But absolutely, there isn't a product on the market, not mine or anyone else, that's going to erase those. They're going to make them better, but how much really depends on the depth of the wrinkles. And not to mention, it might look better when your face is in repose, but then when you smile, as I do, then it pops. So there's limitations to what any skincare product can do, but that in combination, especially for crow's feet, when you use one of our exfoli exfoliants, either the AHA or the BHA exfoliants, you should see improvement. You absolutely should see improvement. Getting rid of, I would never say get rid of. I wish I could, believe me. Oh my gosh, it would be my favorite thing to tell you. But it wouldn't be true, and we're all about truth and beauty. Stavros says, Paula, you look gorgeous. <gasps> Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask, is applying two products with, say, 2% niacinamide the same as applying one product with 4% niacinamide or any other active? So I think what you're asking me is if you double up ingredients, are you going to get extra benefit? I think that's what you're asking. And the answer would be, for certain ingredients, absolutely. Um, in my, uh, in Paula's Choice, we definitely have, for example, uh, my skin balancing toner contains niacinamide, and I also use my 10% my niacinamide booster. So yeah, I know I'm getting extra niacinamide, and extra niacinamide is not a bad thing. Obviously, I'm getting somewhat less in my toner than, well, a lot less in my toner than I am in my booster, but then that always depends on the depth of the problem you're addressing. So if it comes to open pores and congested pores, then 10% uh, niacinamide or doubling up on products that contain niacinamide, you'll get that much uh, better performance. As a rule, depending on the depth of the problem, I encourage just a product that really gives you the concentration you need 
but yeah, no problem in doubling up, whether it's retinol, certain antioxidants, ceramides. Uh, the skin is hungry for those ingredients. It has trouble holding on to them because of sun damage and because of age. So the more you give it, it's rare that there's an ingredient where more means you're going to have problems. That's not always true, uh, but for the most part, you're fine. There's, there's no reason not to. Sheila says, hi, Paula. Thank you for doing these Q&A sessions. Hi, Sheila. My question is, how should I take care of my lips? Can I use sugar scrubs on my lips? And are essential oils, such as peppermint oil, safe for my lips? Peppermint oil isn't safe for any part of any part of you, whether it, especially not your lips. I mean, you cannot imagine how vulnerable lips are uh, because of their unique uh, structural composition, the way the skin is on the lips. Phenomenally sensitive. I love when everybody talks about how sensitive the skin is around the eye because it's thin. Nothing is more sensitive on the face than the lip area. Peppermint oil is a skin irritant. It tingles. It burns. That's bad for any part of your body. Uh, it, essential oils like that, or that waft fragrance, are just a problem for the body anywhere. In terms of scrubs, that tells me if you want to scrub your lips, that means you have dry skin you're not getting rid of, but then I'm wondering what you're doing that's giving, that's making it so your lips are dry. My strong recommendation is do exactly what I do. Ever since I created my Paula's Choice Lip and Body Balm, which contains no fragrance, no tingling, irritating ingredients, is absolutely gentle, but rich, thick, and tenacious, it stays put. I have it everywhere, but primarily I have it on the side of my bed. So before I go to bed at night, I put it on. You don't want to go to bed with naked lips. You want a good layer of an emollient lip balm that sticks around so that I still have it on in the morning so all that drying air and mouth breathing at night doesn't dry out my lips. That will make a huge difference. Same thing during the day, no naked lips. Now in my case, I'm a lipstick girl, so during the day I always have lipstick on. But if you're a lip gloss person, use lip gloss. You can always use my lip and body balm if the color isn't the issue, but you need sunscreen. So you want to consider our lip sunscreen as another uh, option, and it's also very, very emollient. So sun protection, don't scrub at the lips. Please don't put anything irritating on the lips, and make sure that you use the lip and body balm at night. You should never have dry lips again. Again, go to paulschoice.com, and if you choose to give my lip and body balm a try on your bedside, no more going to bed at night with unprotected lips, uh, let me know how it works for you. I'll actually add the link to the product in our chat okay. box. Okay, great. Next question. Yes. Barbara says, hi, Paula. What do you think of microneedling for anti-aging? Sure. So we have a great article we did on paulaschoice.com that explains at length about uh, the positives uh, and negatives uh, about microneedling. So let me sum it up this way. Microneedling, in terms of the research, when it's done at a doctor's office, there seems to be some benefit. The problem is, is when you use the at-home devices and you use them on a regular basis, when you wound the skin on a regular basis, the skin has a rough and harder time recovering. So the issue is, is when you do lasers or resurf you know, heavy-duty resurfacing uh, pro uh, procedures that doctors do, uh, like high-strength peels or lasers or the, all these things that help resurface skin, heat up skin, help to build the structures of the skin and strengthen them. That's great if it isn't done all the time. When it's done all the time, skin has can't recover. Each time the skin is damaged, you're rolling that little lawnmower thing over your face, skin is being damaged every day and it doesn't have time to recover. So the research pretty much shows that it has value when a, it is done on an occasional basis with some of these very special unique machines that physicians have. And again, this article on microneedling is on uh, paulaschoice.com. Okay. But for the at-home devices, 
I, I think it is incredible, well, I don't think. The research shows that it is incredibly iffy and you run more, you run the risk of more downside than upside because you're constantly damaging the surface of skin. A damaged surface can't protect from the environment, can't look smooth and healthy in the long run in terms of warding off sun damage, warding off environmental damage, keeping important ingredients in skin. I know they like telling you, well, it opens channels and help ingredients absorb, the truth of it is, in a well-formulated product, the ingredients will absorb and it actually doesn't need help. Plus those channels, supposedly the channels, are really wounds. And so they are not actually letting the spread of the ingredients go smoothly across the entire skin surface, which is where you need the ingredients to go. So the short answer is physicians, microneedling machines, once in a while are an option and they're, they're actually, again, in this article, I'll, it explains what these different are, different ones are, but doing it at home on a regular basis, the likelihood is it's more of a downside than an upside. And I put that article in the chat box. Thank you. Uh, Tess is asking, or saying, I find physical sunscreens too drying for my dry, sensitive skin. Is it okay for me to use chemical sunscreens even though I'm breakout prone? Well, some people would say that chemical sunscreens are actually better. Uh, well, actually, I can't believe I just said chemical. Everything is a chemical. Water is a chemical. Zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, the mineral sunscreen ingredients are chemicals. Everything is a chemical. Everything. What it is, is it's a synthetic ingredient versus a mineral-based ingredient. So a synthetic-based sunscreen where the active ingredients are synthetic, some people would say are better for uh, blemish-prone skin because the ingredients are thin, they're not thick. Titanium dioxide and zinc oxide are very thick. Um, so I agree, I think that a lot of people do find titanium dioxide and zinc oxide sunscreens uh, kind of drying. I would encourage you to try, if you haven't tried a couple of hours, I would strongly encourage you to give a couple of hours a try and see how they do uh, for your skin type, uh, partic particularly, I'm forgetting, uh, is it skin recovery? What's the other one? Calm is pure mineral. Our Calm SPF 30 is pure mineral. Our skin recovery, I think, is pure mineral. We have a, a couple of others. Hy hydrolyte? The hydrolyte. Oh, the hydro. Oh, the hydrolyte is pure mineral. So I would consider giving those a try and maybe using my plant oil booster underneath them. The problem is, is for sensitive skin, it's not that the synthetic sunscreens aren't remarkable because they're remarkable. They protect skin from the you know, most cancer-causing thing out there in the environment, which is direct contact, ongoing direct contact with the sun. However, uh, the, the, the gentleness of the mineral-based sunscreen ingredients are something for somebody with sensitive skin to consider. So I would consider taking a look at a couple of my, if you haven't already, a couple of my uh, mineral-based SPF 30 sunscreens and maybe putting a hyaluronic acid or, one, or my plant oil booster underneath it to see how that works for you. Uh, and then the other thing is, is you can do what I do, which is use a foundation that contains my sunscreen. So you can put your moisturizer on that meets the needs of your dry, blemish-prone skin and then put your mineral-based sunscreen in your foundation. The only thing you have to remember whenever you use a foundation or a tinted moisturizer with sunscreen, it has to be applied liberally. You can't just put on a little, little bit. You gotta really put it on. So consider trying that and seeing how it works. However, having said that, there's nothing wrong with experimenting with a synthetic-based uh, sunscreen and seeing how your skin does. It's not a problem. Shouldn't include breakouts any more than a mineral-based one does. Uh, someone says, hey Paula, what would you suggest as a sunscreen sub substitute? I'm very allergic to anything with SPF. Don't go outside. Actually, don't go outside doesn't work because the bad rays of the sun come through windows. There is no such thing as a sunscreen substitute. There is absolutely nothing that interrupts the sun's rays in a way that protects from skin cancer and protects from aging, uh, 
premature aging of the skin and long-term aging of the skin like an SPF 30 or greater. When you say you're allergic, I can't imagine how you're allergic. I have never in my career, and again, this is without knowing what you've tried, I've never in my career heard of anybody being allergic to uh, titanium dioxide and or zinc oxide, uh, which are the ingredients found in mineral-based sunscreens. So I would strongly suggest you take a look at the kind of products you've used in the past that you think you're allergic to. Um, my mineral-based sunscreens, uh, now the, the, the active ingredients are highly unlikely to cause a problem. Could be the other products, but none of our products have fake fragrance or the typical irritants that you see that show up in other skincare products. So I would give it one more shot because the short answer is there, other than staying out of the sun, other than really covering yourself up, sunglasses, big brim glasses, but even then, you know, the sun gets through and the sun, the bad rays of the sun come through windows and what are you going to do, wear a hat and glasses and rash guards even when you're inside. So I can't think of anything quite as vital in skincare as sunscreen, so I would ask you to give it another shot to find one that is really compatible with your skin type? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I wish there was an alternative. Uh, this is sort of similar to the microneedling question. Um, Jessica would like to know what you think about derma rollers for acne scars. What about devices like the Neutrogena Light Therapy Acne Mask? Does the light Neutrogena, actually... Neutrogena Light what color light does the Neutrogena, um, uh, is that Jessica, can Jessica tell us what light emission, I'm not, I'll look it up right you know, now. without Brian here I don't, Brian is my memory, without Brian here I don't remember, but uh, in terms of the derma rollers for acne scarring, uh, there is absolutely research that the type of derma rollers that a physician uses has benefit, in fact one of the benefits for certain is, uh, is acne scarring. Not all acne scarring, but some acne scarring. Again, this all is in the article about microneedling. Derma rollers, derma rollers are a type of microneedling device. So I would take a look at that, but again, I'm not encouraging you to use the at-home devices as opposed to uh, what a dermatologist uh, can provide in terms of a specific types of deeper interestingly penetrating sometimes they're attached to certain lasers it, it's fascinating what some of these devices are uh, and what they can do for acne scarring but again at home I'm very skeptical about uh, the research is limited at best the research is often from the companies that make these products so uh, I would approach it very carefully but for certain what the dermatologist does there's research showing uh, that there's benefit in terms of light emission. What color light does that Neutrogena? It says blue and red light. Okay. So I'm less worried about red light. We uh, have an article up also on paulischoice.com about blue light. Whether or not blue light is effective uh, for acne, what we know, the, the, the research is just completely not there in terms of anything definitive. Uh, for at-home devices. However, what we do know for certain, uh, this, is, this is true for your cell phone, this is true for the blue light that is emanated from your computer, is that blue light causes macular degeneration. So what I have done on my phone, I don't know if you can uh, tell, but I have the yellow light from my phone on all the time. And I have a uh, my yellow light, a, a safeguard from blue light on my computer all the time. So the research about what blue light does to your eyes is incredibly significant. It should not be ignored. We explain it all on the article we have on paulischoice.com. Um, so I would approach that carefully in terms of red light. Yes, there is some research about red light it is not a is not a is not an issue. Red light, when you have a, a clock next to your bed that emanates red light, that's kind of in the similar, well, actually very similar, if not identical, to the red light. Uh, these uh, anti-aging claims made around the red light. My 
my, the research is limited. I, I you know, I, it won't hurt. Whether it helps, whether it's worth your time, I'm skeptical that it's worth your time. I, I wouldn't do it. I don't think, you know, if the research isn't there that says something is worth my effort, spending 30 minutes or however long they tell you to spend under that thing, I only do what the research shows really, really, really has benefit uh, for the long term or the short term for that matter for skin. So red light, 50-50, maybe blue light. I absolutely can't recommend blue light because of the research about uh, the, the macular degeneration it can cause, which leads me to worry about the results on skin. And sure enough, there is research showing that there's negative results on skin. So I would err on not, and the red light, again, 50-50, I, I, it's a toss. Uh, hi Paula, is it okay to use 2% BHA and the 1% retinol together, or would that lead to irritation? Well, anything can lead to irritation uh, uh, based, you know, when you're using what I call bioactive ingredients. However, that's one of the things you can experiment. Some people have absolutely no problem. In fact, uh, they'll use a prescription version of the 1% retinol, uh, which is a cosmetic version. The Paula's, what Paula's Choice has is a cosmetic version, the 1% retinol booster and the clinical 1% retinol. Um, and they do fine with the 2% BHA or the 4% BHA or the 10% AHA uh, mixed acid exfoliant we have. They do fine. And some people, on the other hand, can't. So that's one of those things you have to experiment with to see how it does for your skin. That's, that is a very individual reaction thing. Some people do great. Some people might have problems. Uh, most people do fine. But for you, because it's just you and your face and your, and your individual reaction, um, it's worth experimenting. Uh, retinol is an incredible ingredient for skin. And of course, the daily need for exfoliating is very, very significant for sun-damaged skin, which I, there's probably not a person in the world over the age of 18 that doesn't have sun-damaged skin. No matter how much we might have tried to be protected, um, it's hard to be that good, especially when we're young, especially when the research shows most people aren't good about wearing sunscreen. And Lord knows at my home in Hawaii, when I'm at the beach and I see what people do with sunscreen, it's like, oh my God, they don't stand a chance. Why, um, on the subject, why is the SPF value of Paula's Choice sunscreens different from one country to another? For example, an SPF rating for a PC sunscreen in the U.S. is different from one in Australia. Oh, geez. Darn, that's a good question. So, let's see, how do I say this? So, the difference between, so the products are the same. They are identical. The rating has to do with regulation and being able to get our products in in an easy flawless manner but the products are the same they're not any different but there are legal limitations of what we can put on one of our sunscreens and that's why you see a difference I regret that I wish it was different we're working on making it different uh, but what I can tell you is the formulary is not any different in Australia than it is in the United States. It's, it's a regulation issue. I hate regulations. Well, not all regulations. <laughs> Leonie asks, could washing my face only once a day instead of twice help with dryness? Uh, can washing... The answer is... It could, but I would, because of the need to clean your face from the day at night, getting off makeup and whatever has built up on the face from the world, and then again in the morning to start with a fresh, clean face so that you can put on your skincare products in the morning and they can penetrate and get the healthy ingredients to skin, and also have a smoother, cleaner palette to put your makeup on over, uh, I worry that you'd be missing 
those that, that benefit from either washing your face in the morning or washing your face at night. What you can consider doing is using a different cleanser. So one of the best cleansers that I could recommend from Paula's Choice from what you're describing is probably the Resist cleanser for normal to dry skin in our dark blue Resist line. I would absolutely consider giving that a try and see how that does when you uh, wash your face twice a day. So the answer is yes, washing your face once a day can reduce dryness, but using the right cleanser can get you the benefits of washing twice a day without worrying about drying out your skin. Hi Paula, if you want sun protection for skin around the eyes, says Moogle Google. Mo Moogle Google? Yes. Oh, I love that. Is, Moogle, the, Moogle. is the only solution a mineral sunscreen or are there any synthetic chemical sunscreens that don't cause eye irritation? So the eye irritation that some people can experience from synthetic sunscreens uh, is really uh, one that it doesn't happen for everybody. A lot of people use synthetic sunscreens and they do just fine around their eyes. I don't have any research to point to why I feel so strongly that titanium dioxide and zinc oxide are so much better for the eye area. Other than that's what the research shows is that titanium dioxide, in other words, the research doesn't say, oh yes, you can only use titanium dioxide and zinc oxide around your eyes. Rather, what is well established is that titanium oxide and zinc oxide are the most gentle uh, sunscreen ingredients, which is why I feel so passionately that that is the type of sunscreen you should use around your eye. However, a lot of people just do fine using synthetic-based sunscreen ingredients around their eye. What I strongly suggest is put all your skincare products on and then whatever beautiful mineral-based sunscreen, moisturizing sunscreen you're using on your face, also put that around your eye. Or if you're using foundation, like I do, that has sunscreen, then put that around your eye after you put all your uh, skincare products for dry skin on your face. So there's many ways to go about it. Uh, but again, a lot of people do great using synthetic sunscreens around their eye. The most important thing is to protect your skin from the sun. That's, that's what's at the top of the hierarchy of everything else. And then my strong preference is mineral-based ones for around the eye. And there's many different ways to get that benefit to skin uh, and use your moisturizing products uh, underneath, then apply your sunscreen uh, with mineral-based uh, ingredients or your foundation uh, with mineral, uh, with sunscreen with mineral-based ingredients. The foundation still has to be SPF 30 or greater, by the way. Angie says, people keep telling me that flaking is a sign of a product working, but that isn't correct, right? Isn't that a sign of irritation? It's definitely a sign of a problem because flaking skin should be nobody's goal for skincare. Where does that myth come from? That's absolutely a sign of a problem. Uh, a lot of people use a retinol product and they say, oh, my skin is flaking and must be getting better. No, that means either you're using a bad retinol product, you can't use retinol, or you're using other products that are sensitizing to skin so the retinol just makes matters worse, even if it's a well-formulated retinol product. Same thing with exfoliants. The leave-on exfoliants like AHAs and BHAs are meant to work naturally on your skin. In, in other words, when your skin sheds unwanted dead skin cells on the surface, when we're young, you don't see, like right now I'm shedding millions of skin cells. You're not supposed to see the skin shedding. The natural function of skin is to do it without seeing it. So if you're seeing flaking, that is not a sign of anything good. It is a sign of a problem. Now, some flaking, by the way, keep in mind, especially when it's around the corner of the nose, can be a sign of, a, of, a, of some skin disorders. It doesn't have to be related uh, to the products you're using. But for certain, without question, flaking is never the goal. That would be, what a waste to use skincare products that say, well, your skin will be doing better, but it's going to look like crap. I mean, really. So yeah, no flaking, that myth has to stop. Bad myth, not helping your skin. Um, I love oh. myths, by the way. That's my favorite thing is busting myths. So bring it on. If you got other myths you've seen running around the internet, just ask me and I'll 
do my best to tell you what the science really says. Elle says, Paula, thanks so much for your incredible products and helpful information. Can my face primer without an SPF dilute my SPF applied underneath it, or am I overthinking it? You're over, well, I never mind overthinking skin care. <laughs> never mind overthinking sun care. Lord knows. Overthink, if you're going to overthink anything, overthink sun care. Um, so once, uh, no, it won't dilute it. So once everything is absorbed in to the skin, and you put on a liberal amount of sunscreen over it, you're fine, you're not diluting it. It's when you put something over the sunscreen that causes it to dilute. Now the reason you can apply foundation over a sunscreen and it doesn't dilute it is one is I, I love recommending foundations that contain sunscreen, that's number one. But number two is that the foundation is not meant to absorb into the skin, right? Because if foundation absorbed into skin, then you wouldn't have foundation on the surface. It is specifically designed to stay on the surface. So it doesn't interrupt what the sunscreen that has absorbed into the skin is doing to protect your skin from the sun. So don't worry, you're not diluting it. Once everything has absorbed in and you then put on your sunscreen, you're just fine and you can put your foundation. And again, I love doubling up on sunscreen. That way I know you're getting enough sunscreen to your skin. And I would actually encourage you to try my primer with sunscreen because if I can get you to use more, I know you'll be getting at the very least the right amount of protection when your moisturizer also contains sunscreen or your foundation does. Tatiana is new to our brand. She just purchased our Calm Redness Relief 1% BHA Lotion. Oh, great. As well as the Resist Barrier Repair Moisturizer with retinol. And she's wondering how she can best use them together. So, well, you just use them together. You would use, it, it doesn't really matter uh, the order. Generally speaking, we recommend exfoliants before everything else, but people shake it up all the time. Um, I often uh, put the uh, exfoliant on last after I put on everything else, but it varies in terms of my mood and what I'm remembering to do at the moment. Um, but I just let me just really say strongly that when you have sensitive skin, I worry about the other products you're using. I do think my 1% Calm for an expo a BHA for an exfoliant is great when you have sensitive skin. But let me just say carefully that I need all of the other products you use, your cleanser, your toner, your moisturizers, whatever uh, specialty treatment products you're using, all are gentle, none are fragrance, none contain any irritating plant extracts. It's very important for you to be successful with my products or any products on especially extremely sensitive skin, that they not contain uh, anything that irritates skin. So uh, you can just use them as you want. Maybe start out with the 1% BHA every other day. Maybe on one, you know, in the morning use the Berry Repair and not use the 1% use it twice a day, judge how your skin is doing and what results you're getting and that'll determine how well you're doing. Um, somebody is wondering how you reapply SPF when you're wearing makeup. Oh, that is the hardest question. So, there's no easy answer. However, for women, obviously, if they're the ones wearing makeup, or men for that matter, if they're wearing makeup, the easiest and the only way to touch up sunscreen without wrecking your makeup is to add a powder, an SPF 30 powder over it. Uh, that is my best recommendation. It's what I do um, because there is no way, there's no way I am taking all of this stuff off and reapplying uh, sunscreen uh, now, the exception to that is uh, after I'm swimming and I, you know, or I'm, you know, kayaking and if I've been out in the sun a long time, then I do go in and wash my face and I do more than just apply powder, not to mention the sweating and my makeup starts looking terrible. But when you're wearing enough sunscreen, so for example, when I'm kayaking or I'm out in a long day uh, in the sun, I do put on more sunscreen. I wear two sunscreens underneath my foundation with sunscreen. I want that sunscreen to last as long as possible. The more SPF you have on, the longer it lasts during the day. That's what that SPF number represents. 
I know on the back of products it says reapply every two hours. However, the reason that number, SPF 30, SPF 50, is on the label is because of how long it lasts when you're in the sun, because that's when sunscreen starts breaking down is when you're in the sun. So having said that, unless you're willing to take your makeup off, there is no easy way other than adding a powder with SPF 30 over your makeup to touch it up. And again, you got to do it liberally. It's a trade-off, so it might not look quite so, as, so natural as you would like. Uh, but that is a great way to do it. And of course, I can't encourage you enough to layer up sunscreen, your primer with sunscreen, your moisturizer with sunscreen, your foundation with sunscreen. I think that is an incredible way uh, to take care of your skin on a daily basis. You will see a difference. Uh, in the health of your skin and discolorations and uneven skin tone and just about everything, including, uh, uh, you know, post-acne, red marks. Everything gets better because the sun damages the ability of skin to recover from everything. So the better you take care of your skin from the sun, the better everything else tends to be. And are you, do you have time for a few more questions? Sure. Okay, good. We're here together. Let's spend more time. Uh, Martino is wondering if there's really a link between dairy and acne or other food that can cause acne, or is it all just a myth? No, it's, it's not. Well, let me put it this way. Uh, by the way, I love that question. So without question, we know, uh, the research is clear, that some dietary intake, some foods you eat, can trigger acne, but it isn't true for everybody. For some people, it's dairy. For some t people, it's gluten. For some people, it's pineapple, sesame seeds. For some people, it just depends what you happen to be allergic to. If you're not allergic to it, if you're not sensitized to the food, you'll break out anyways. The easiest way to test this is to start with a process of elimination. Stop eating dairy, see if your skin gets better. You gotta give it a while, right? Because it takes about three to three to six weeks, two months for the cycle of acne to go through, and especially if you tend to break out during your menstrual cycles, your period. So you can start by eliminating one type of food and see how your skin does. With the two biggest groups that are, well actually three biggest groups, well actually four biggest groups, that are known uh, to trigger acne in some people is dairy, gluten, shellfish, and certain types of nuts. So you would start by eliminating those one at a time and see how your skin does one at a time, then all of them all at once to see if it's the combination that's throwing your skin over the edge. But yes, there is definitely research that says diet can affect acne, but not for everybody, and the types of foods that trigger acne are not the same for everybody. Um, how, Victoria is wondering if you can mix the new ceramide cream with the retinol booster or should she buy the retinol treatment instead? The retinol treatment. We have a retinol Maybe treatment. The, I think it's probably the 1% clinical. Hmm. So say the question again. I'm not actually she's, she's asking if she could, well, okay, so let me put it this way. The answer is yes. The ceramide, uh, which I just love. The ceramide, ceramide does have retinol in it too. Right, but not much. Okay. Not much. Well, I mean Point enough five. to have Point an five. impact, okay. but if you have uh, uh, extreme sun damage, signs of aging, you, more retinol is better. And yes, you can combine them. Uh, so don't be afraid of that. Uh, retinol, the, you know, the likelihood is you will do just fine. Most people do just fine. Or you can alternate. You can use the ceramide one day, the retinol booster or clinical uh, retinol treatment the next day, uh, one in the morning, one at night. It's, it's really the, it, think, I always bring it back to think about it like your diet. You can't eat all healthy foods all day long. I mean, there's too many healthy foods. You'd be sick by the end of the day. So that's why you break it up into 
what you do in the morning and what you do in the evening and that's how I want you to think about skincare so you could do some things in the morning and some things at night and that way you give your skin all the beneficial ingredients because you can't give it everything all at once Victoria uses BHA liquid in the night but she wants to also incorporate an AHA potentially in the morning and she doesn't know which product AHA product to use. So I always get skeptical when people want to double up. I know a lot of my Paula's Choice ladies and men uh, think that if a little is good, a lot is better. So without knowing why you want to add an AHA. Now, if you have uh, extreme signs of sun damage, some you know congested, extreme congested pores, uh, if you have, uh, you know, you know, need for a firmer feeling on your face, then yes, there is no reason to not consider adding an AHA. So depending on your skin type, you can either do my 8% AHA lotion, my 8% AHA gel, or the 5% AHA moisturizer from the resist line, the dark blue resist line for normal to dry skin. So there's many ways to go about it. It takes some amount of experimentation to see how your skin does when you add, anytime you add, again, the term I use is bioactive ingredients, meaning ingredients that really impact the skin in very significant, uh, very uh, life, you know, changing kind of ways, then you really want to pay attention to how your skin is doing. So. Uh, I would start with my lower strengths, but if you wanted to try my new 10% AHA, which is just a beautiful formula, uh, maybe you could try that once a week or twice a week and add that in. Maybe use that and not use the 2% BHA. So there's many ways to experiment to see what works best for you, what concerns you're trying to address. Paula, what sunscreen do you use for your hands? She really wants to carry around a moisturizer. This is Bella talking. She really wants to carry around a moisturizer plus sunscreen hand cream so that she can uh, apply it throughout the day. Well, I just use about every Paula's Choice sunscreen we have uh, that is pure mineral. I even use one that we used to have that we discontinued and I took like a hundred bottles of those. Um, so I use mostly uh, the Paula's Choice SPF 30 uh, mineral-based sunscreens we have. Uh, and I uh, put it on the back of my hands, I keep it in my purse, I reapply it when I wash my hands. Uh, for long days at the beach, uh, or when I'm kayaking, I use a Neutrogena SPF 60 pure mineral product. Now it makes me white, but when I'm out kayaking or long days, I don't care and it's waterproof. Paula's Choice. Uh, uh, the pure mineral sunscreens we have are not waterproof, uh, but the SPF 60 from Neutrogena is so specifically for when you're swimming or when you're kayaking. I keep saying kayaking because I'm a kayaker and I'm missing Hawaii. Um, uh, then the uh, Neutrogena SPF 60, but for that moisturizing sensation, uh, the Paula's Choice uh, SPF 30s in, for your uh, that are for the face are great for your hands, and I would strongly recommend it. It's what I have on right now. Uh, Actually, I think I have the hydrolyte. Is that the one I have on right now? Yeah, I think I have the hydrolyte on right now. Is there, uh, going back to the face powder with SPF, is there any that you recommend or which, which do you use? So unfortunately, I use one from Paula's Choice that is discontinued. So go on beautypedia.com and take a look at the SPF powders we've rated highly uh, and, and take a look at which one you think you might want to try. Um, I think, does Neutrogena have, where's Brian when I need him? I think Neutrogena has one. Desiree would know this too. But definitely you can go on beautypedia.com uh, and take a look at the SPF uh, powders uh, we recommend there. And uh, I, I, I know you can get a, a really good one and a reasonably priced one because they, they're def there aren't a lot of them, but they're definitely out there. Yeah, I'm trying to look real quick, but I'm... Cool. Anything coming up? up? Uh, Anything? See, we need Brian. I shouldn't do these alone. But I love, I actually, even though I miss Brian and Desiree, I have to say, and I, I think most of you know Desiree Stordahl and Brian Barron, both my alter egos, they, they make me look very smart, uh, have far better memories than I do, and 
and I just know that they would know this, but I get to have this intimate time with you where it's just me and you, and I, I have to tell you, I just, I, I just love it. I love that I get to do this. And I, I, I mean, I love when I do it with them, but I also love when I have this opportunity to just be with you and share my thoughts and my knowledge and what truth and beauty is all about for Paula's Choice Skincare, this journey of having beautiful skin together. I love that it's just me and you, but, but don't tell Brian and Desiree that I'm glad they're not here. But I'll be back with Brian and Desiree again because I do, oh God, I know I'm insulting the hell out of them, but um, I do miss them because they know so much. Are we finding any SPF powders? You know, Bare Minerals has a few that are SPF 20 and 25. Um, which we That's rated, a shame. We rated, I think, probably a while ago. Good, so good ratings, but it could be that they've moved up because hope hopefully so. everybody knows that SPF 20 and SPF 25 is not enough. However, because you're touching up, and if that's the best you can get, although I'm, I'm almost certain there's better yeah. out there. But again, go to Beautypedia.com. Oh. oh, we have one. No, what did you I find? think they've. I think they've gone up. Have they improved their formula? They might have. Uh, anyway, go to, so go to Beautypedia. Beautypedia, Bare Minerals <laughs> might have some options for you, an SP of 25. I do think they might have an SP of 30, but definitely uh, look for one, and that's probably your best, uh, again, that's your best way to not have to wash up your makeup and touch up your sunscreen. But however, just make sure you're getting on a lot of sunscreen for a long day, which can make all the difference in the world. Uh, we are almost out of time. Do you want to end with a fun question? Sure. Okay. I love fun. Mandara is wondering what your current favorite TV show is. You know, when I say this, I know I'm going to sound like a like something out of the past. Um, I actually don't watch TV shows. It's, it's it's not that I don't watch TV, but I'm an old movie buff. I like watching movies. And it's a shortcoming, I know, because I know there's a huge segment of popular culture that I'm missing. My sisters love watching television series. They're always telling me about this one and that one. But I, if, if I admit to anything, my, my guilty pleasure late at night when I'm uh, taking off my makeup and doing my skincare routine and just before I get into bed, I do watch old reruns of The Big Bang Theory. I think it's one of the most brilliant uh, TV shows, comedy TV shows ever done um, in the 40s and the 50s. That's just my, thing, my favorite, The Women. The original The Women, the one with Norma Shearer and Rosalind Russell and, uh, and the relationship between these women and the standard of the day is an incredible insight to the talent of these women. The script, I believe the script was by Lillian Hellman, if I'm correct, correct about that. Maybe not Lillian Helma. It's brilliant. It's definitely... Who is it by? Can you look that up really quickly? Yeah. Do you see who it's by? Um, is probably one of my favorites. I also love You Can't Take It With You. With uh, Was that with... Um, who is that with? That's with one of the Barrymore brothers. Uh, James Stewart. Gene Arthur. Oh, that is incredible. You Can't Take It With You. Uh, Little Foxes with Betty Davis. Betty Davis and her youth. Jezebel. Oh, Jezebel with Betty nice. Davis. Oh, my God. I'm, should I wrap up? I can't wax <laughs> poetic about old movies. Although I have to say, I generally don't like uh, contemporary old movies, but I just watched one with uh, James Belushi uh, called Mr. Destiny with young Linda Hamilton. It is adorable. It is adorable. What a kick in the pants. So now you know that I'm just an old fuddy-duddy. <laughs> I like some of the the old stuff. What, who wrote Who wrote Little um, uh, the Women? Do you see? Anita Luce. Oh, Anita Luce. Claire Booth Luce, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Claire Booth Luce, Claire wrote, Booth the, Luce. wrote the play. And then who, who, who and then did Anita, the... Anita Luce wrote the screenplay. Wrote the screenplay. It's so. brilliant. It's brilliant. So thank you for taking the time. And I do, you, and believe me, along the way, guys, ask me anything you want. I almost have no secrets from you. Uh, anytime I can share what I know, it's what I love. And I love the time we have together. Thank you for being on this journey with me. Thank you for being a part of the Paula's Choice family. Until next time, thank you so much. Have a great day.